thank you so much for joining us again for another episode of the war room and as you can see there's not three there's four of us today because we're starting our special episode where me and Ralph talked about this when we were looking for Tony's replacement and we wanted to maybe meet some of you guys out there that, that were interested in joining up with us. Mark was one of the first people that contacted me and said, I would love to come on the show sometime. I'm available. And so it's taken us a couple months, but finally we got our act together and we got him on the show. So welcome everyone. <laughs> Man, thanks for having me. I'm super happy to be here and, you know, just, hey, you know, it's good, good, uh, good stuff. So I like well, we're, we're very to excited to have you and talk with you and, and uh, he hear about your channel and talk to you about what's going on and get all that updated stuff. So if you guys are out there, Every one of you guys that are watching this video right now, whether you're watching it later on YouTube or you're watching it live now, all you have to do is contact me and Ruff and say, hey, um, if you got an opening, I'd love to come on and talk with you guys. <clears throat> we're going to try and do it once a month. So we're, you know, we're, it's going to be a while before we get anyone else scheduled. So don't, um, you know, don't expect it to be like in the next week or two. But It's going to be sort of hopefully end of the month this every month sort of thing. And I know everybody knows who Mark is, but he wanted to come on, and so that's great. But it's great to put a face to some of the people. We don't know who they are. Put a face to them so everybody yeah. can see. I, I would say everybody knows me. Not yet, anyways. But uh, Oh, yeah. you, you <laughs> oh, get out of here. Yeah. He's, but, he's a real war gamer with real war game information and everything. But uh, so, everyone, thank you for coming out here. We're going to be on this show for two hours today. And, of course... We got our new co-host, Nate. How are you doing today, Nate? Doing all right, man. Good. And Ruff, I was Not online too. with you yesterday. Yes, and it's we played. Like I can't get away from you. I know. <laughs> it seems like only yesterday. Oh, God, it was. <laughs> um, yes, we played um, uh, Vijay, Vijay Nagara, which is this coin-like um, new series out. And I must say... It was great fun, but I don't think we played it very well because the designer was on. And then afterwards, he's put about 12 comments saying, should have done this, should have done that. So anyway, <laughs> I don't I don't care. I had great fun. And um, it's about a part of uh, medieval history that um, I certainly don't know too much about. And I would uh, put it to you that uh, not many people, war gamers, would do either because it's a, a bit obscure, but great fun. I, I, next, I'm curious, Ruff, did you... Yeah. Uh, I, I wasn't able to catch it, um, but did you have like a yellow knight or anything like that? No, I mean, somebody picked the yellow team. I, <laughs> I took the yellow, yellow team. I was the yellow. I was team yellow <laughs> yesterday. <Yeah. laughs> he, he was. Uh, he yeah. There's the three factions. You've got the Delhi Sultanate, which are Muslim, and you've got the um, Burami, which are which is why I played another Muslim um, uh, faction, and then the uh, namesake of the game. Uh, are Hindus, so um, it was quite uh, it's, it's a bloody good game, yeah, really good game. So I was quite impressed. Apart from I, I that, have I've it, been... I'm, I'm, Go on. I'm, 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 I have it, and we do a monthly meetup here locally, so I'm hoping to get it to the table that way. What I like about it, Mark, it's quick, right? And, All yeah. games are quick that... when you're playing with people, no. Yeah, no, I I have a reputation of oh Mark likes complex big monster games, which is very true. Yes, but I'm also like I like to say I'm like Mikey. If it's a war game, I'll like it. I try to find things that I like, and I like uh, I like simple games. I've got games all the way down to the little tiny eleven by seventeen maps with you know forty counters, and I, I just love war gaming. Period. But your heart, like your heart is in the seven foot by eight foot maps isn't it really oh the man i love monster games absolutely. <laughs> no i'm a i'm and i'm a big uh i wouldn't say i like complex games to be complex just because <clears throat> but like i've played asl since it came out i've played gm oh man you're World fucking old then <laughs> um, yeah well you know it's all Right, as they say, age is you know actually deep down inside. I'm still 12 years old. But, yeah, I'd just say know. never grow up. I go, I'll never grow up. And the wife says, you're right. You know, 
That's right. Yeah. What's, the say they, what's the saying? Go, I'll, probably it away, it up, but, I'll probably screw it up, but you know, right? We don't. What is it? We don't grow. We. I don't, I, see, I don't even get to try. But there's a saying <laughs> out there. I have a shirt that says it about. You know, we don't grow old because we don't. We don't grow old basically because we stop playing. Basically. Uh, yeah. I, I like I'm really bad at quotes, so yeah, I won't even try. Don't 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 quote Mark on anything. No, uh, no. obviously. But um, you know, go ahead. Sorry. I was just gonna say so. Um, if you if people are unfamiliar, you have a YouTube channel. You're a YouTuber. You do board games. You do obviously. Uh, I I was on your. Uh, I was watching your uh, what was it the podcast with a couple guys that you know. Zero's corner, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So really, so why don't really you just kind of introduce your channel, tell them what you do and how you do it, and and so people know if they're not familiar with you. Okay, um, so uh, it's Clark Commando, nineteen eighty three. I've had the channel for oh I don't know maybe like four years. Obviously, being sick, I've got more time to dedicate to it. But it's a channel I've dedicated to replays and learn how to play after action reports. Um, I do a few unboxings, but not a lot because there's plenty of that out there. I do uh, what I call trips down memory lane. So <clears throat> I'm that guy will open up an old Avalon Hill game or SPI, whatever, and just talk about it like experiences and just kind of like, wow, I remember this when you were 12 years old opening this up and like, wasn't that amazing? Um, and then, yeah, uh, I guess a few months ago I got the idea from somebody had sent me I'm kind of an organizer of gaming uh, here in Northern California. And, and uh, somebody had sent me an original newsletter that somebody did for a club I helped organize, I don't know, 30 years ago. And it really made me think, I'm like, you know, there's all these shows out there that feature designers and personalities in the hobby and stuff. And I said, why don't we, how about just something that just say, hey, here's your local war gamer. And I don't exclude anybody, right? I had, um, and I'm really bad with names right now too because of the chemo, but I had the guy that, re Compass Game recently came out with that Stuka game. Uh, yeah. Joe Fernandez, I think, was the designer. Mm -hmm. right? But I had him on my show. Right. But it's really just, a, you know, kind of like a little bit of this, like, get, you know, get to meet your local gamer. And, and I uh, just love I just love wargaming and I like to spread the joy and I like it's brought me a lot of pleasure in my life. And I've done everything from the short replays to, yeah, I get the videos on there that are like an hour and a half long and the people that watch it are going to watch it over time and drink coffee and go, Oh, that's interesting. You know, but <laughs> See, I, I never get the, the long videos, but you go, oh, don't make long videos. Nobody will watch them. I watch them. I, yeah, I, do know, too. I, I, I watched a it. six hour video the other day for um, somebody doing something for six yeah. hours. Uh, like, six hours, even for me. Now I would watch it in segments if it's interesting. Uh, maybe six hours. I would cut it up you know but oh you guys are wimps, you guys are wimps. <laughs> and I, i'll just say this I, I use uh my iphone to shoot the video i do use a tripod now or i used to do the shaky blah 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 but um but yeah i don't really edit it i actually shoot it look at it and then i upload it and it's not it's i have the way you should forget this but, editing stuff people yeah. don't like it then too bad <laughs> Yeah. Let's say hi to all of our friends out there. We've got Steven. a few in. We've got a few in. We got a few people. Nornick, what's going on? Phoenix, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Christopher. <clears throat> Mr. <throat> Butter Jelly, how you doing tonight? Mike. Meandering. Ken. Ron. Rob. Rob. West, Sorry West about Wales. that, Rob. I thought you were Ron, but West you're not Ron. Ron's your brother. You're Rob. I got gotcha. you. Don't worry Ron. about it. <laughs> e4 Airman is in a wet Ohio today. Marco, what is going on? Edward, William, good to see everybody. Yeah. Good to see everyone. Extra squeaky, Koi, what's going on? John, John, any military game systems that use airplane miniatures mm. that you Ooh. all like? Mm. Miniatures, miniatures. Airplane no. miniatures. <clears throat> No, airplane games, great. Um, yeah, I don't have any. No, I don't have any with miniatures. 
Now, now we're miniatures. I could talk about a couple that I like for war game, you know, board games. Gaucho, uh, Thomas, and, and I apologize if I missed everyone. So, uh, John's from Virginia. How you doing, John? Good to see you. Great state. That's yeah, where that's where Nate's from. That's right. At least that's where I'm at. I'm not from Virginia. Oh, you're not from Virginia. No, you got that where you from he's, got that, he's got that Kentucky Kansas? train. That's right. I was born in Kentucky, but I lived for almost 30 years in Indiana. You don't lose it, though. You can't. You see, it's nope. inbuilt. It's genetic. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, but I did find out not too long ago. Actually, my my family has a history going back 400 years to Virginia, and actually, uh, some of my family actually owned a farm that was on the Spotsylvania battlefield. Oh wow! During the That's Civil nice. War, it was used as a Union headquarters. Mm. Uh, wow, that's really no, that's really interesting. Yes. My, my my family, uh, really quick. My it's interesting. It was pretty scandalous back in the day. Both of my grandfathers immigrated from Italy in the twenties, and uh, they were, of course, little kids, children um, then. But both of my grandmothers actually go all the way back to the Mayflower. Like I was born in Brockton, Massachusetts. I've been in California since I was ten, but. And I don't know a lot about the history, but you know, sadly, my family's kind of splintered, and you know. Yeah, yeah, family. yeah. We know that one. Yeah, but yeah, your surname gives it away, though, Mark. Yeah, yeah. from Naples. That that came from Naples. My other grandfather was from Sicily. His last oh. name was Alimo. Yeah, it always ends and, in a vowel, doesn't it? These what's uh, that? It always ends in a vowel. The Italian names always <laughs> end in a Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. Is this uh, pa Palmyra, Virginia, anywhere close to you, Nate? Palmyra? I don't know. P A L Y A. It's, it's, it's pronounced. It's pronounced Palmyra. Oh, okay. Is that close to you? Um, I have to look it up. No, oh, I think the word. I think in a word, no. Then you know how to say it, but you don't know where it is. Okay, great. <laughs> Smart ass. Hey, look at. Uh, Look at what's crawled out underneath the desk today. Tony <coughs> Wood Life is here. Tony. Ah. It's, it's, it's fairly close. Just I'm like an hour and a half away from him. <coughs> there you go. That's not too bad. So be, uh, live, li, living in Virginia, you must go tour the battlefields all the time, right? Oh, I'm, I always get very excited when the weather gets warm because usually every weekend I go out and try to do something. That's wonderful. That's mm -hmm. great. Yeah, he's got a I, lot of areas to go explore out there. I, I was almost half expecting him to say, well, no, because, you know, it's funny. Cause the only reason I say that is because, like, I live within within 20 minutes to an hour of three big recreational lakes that um, mm -hmm. when I was a kid, we lived in San Jose and we used to go camping there. And now that I'm that close for the last 25 years, I've been like three times. <laughs> You know, it's like, but, uh, but, but at least you've got them. All our historical sites over here have, have car parks built in them. So, um, oh, geez, yeah, uh, and, and important people buried underneath the car. And park. important people, yes, <laughs> and, uh, Richard was found. I tell you what, it was quite funny. I know it's nothing to do with uh, war gaming, but um, there's a, a pub in Whitechapel that's still there. That was the pub in the 1888s with uh, Jack the Ripper, where all the ladies. Who were murdered used to frequent it's still there and i've been in there wow. you know it's quite a, wow. yeah it's, oh yeah so back, um, back i went back east because uh, i still have some relatives live in massachusetts and i don't know it's been about 15 years ago but i went back to visit and uh we went to a pub or a, you know like in uh, i think it was in amherst or something but it was really interesting. It had been there since like the late 1700s. Hmm. And what was really interesting, the ceiling was so low. Like, I mean, I'm not kidding you. If you were like it's six foot down. one, you had yeah. that. Like, but it was really Ooh. neat just being in there, having a, you know, big old mug of beer. And, yeah. And, uh, and that's and, the history. The, it's it's the history. In, even here in Virginia, like for instance, uh, a few years ago, my family came out from the Midwest and, and we all went to, uh, Alexandria in D, uh, outside of DC, 
and we went to a tavern where Thomas Jefferson had his meal after he took the oath of office. Um, and it's inaugural meal, I guess you could call it mm. uh, as president, which was uh, pretty cool. Wow. That is pretty neat. It's funny. I just wanted to comment Mike uh, Berticelli. So he, he lives a few hours from me down in Fresno and I'll, hopefully I'll see him at GMT West here in a couple of weeks. A few hours. The, the, About the three days, hours. It, yeah. So. Yeah. If we drove for, for, for six hours in this country, be in the ocean. Well, you know, California <laughs> is a pretty big state. So, but, but the only reason I said he made the comment, he said, in the old days, most Italians would look down on folks from Sicily. And I was going to say, yeah, you would never tell my grandfather from Sicily and vice versa that he was Italian. You know, like mm. it was kind of so interesting. Mark, you know? So, Mark, since you're there in California, like you could just drive to GMT and pick up yeah, your I GMT. do. Yeah, no. I've been going. I've been going. To, oh, no. Well, I no, they're not that close. They're I mean, they are. You're, yeah, I could theoretically. They're. It's funny. I always get my games last because I think they ship them overseas first, and or they do right. alphabetical order. I don't know, but yeah, they're they're literally like I like to tell people: you drive south of me about two and a half hours, get to Fresno, and then hang right and go in the middle of nowhere for they're about forty five minutes. Like literally, <laughs> yeah. it's it's all uh, agricultural and uh, uh, a lot of uh, beef, a lot of uh, there's oh, Harris, wow. Harris yeah. Ranch, which is well known for their yeah. beef, is out there. And funny story. So Gene Billingsley, <laughs> <I'm really getting laughs> yeah, yeah, this yeah. is funny. I've been going yeah. to GMT West since the very first one in '98, and I've missed a few here and there. But um, my first time there, I'm thinking, okay, small town, you know. And I'm thinking, hey, what's a good steakhouse, Gene? You know, come on. And you know, Harris Ranch is pretty well known and they're maybe 25 minutes away. <clears throat> and anyways long story short i'll never forget his answer he says because he's lived his whole life in hanford and i love gene to death but he was like um applebee's and i was like okay <laughs> and like apple if you're in the bees. states applebee's is like yeah they're like this chain that they're yeah out. but it's just i don't know it's a little story but it's just funny and 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 uh and the thing like you got harris ranch like right down the freaking road and yeah but uh anyways i don't know maybe you had to be there for it to be funny but if you know <laughs> applebee's you would <coughs> yeah well, give me a good steakhouse applebee's nice yeah no all right uh names yes sir you get something new you want to show everyone be while oh, we're talking about oh, our let me go get it oh please yeah new games like christmas right Right. Every week we unwrap new gifts. So, Ralph, do you got anything new to share? Well, uh, well, no. Let's get Nate. I haven't got anything new, but uh, get uh, get Nate's um, new new toy out. Well, I, I, this was after last week's show. I was I, I was way too excited after last week's show talking to Paul about his uh, new game, Romania, uh, 1960 Romania uh, game that I went and got. Not Paris. Oh yeah, you're gonna. That's a good game. Yeah. This is I'm getting ready to ship ship mine out to you, and you went and got it anyway. So. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're gonna, you're oh, gonna, but I think you'll love that. Yeah. There is just a ton of stuff in here, and very excited to try it. And then you get people saying, you know, there how many little maps there are, and there's two big maps and lots of counter sheets. You get people saying, why aren't there mounted maps? Because <laughs> it would it would be twice that weight and it'd be about that <laughs> and twice the price probably. Yeah. There's no nah, I'm not a, oh, it's good. I know I'm, rid of this game. I'm not a fan of mounted maps. Uh, for videoing, them. Mark, they're great. Oh, yeah. so Jester, now now that uh you can't send it to me now, you're you're gonna have to play it. Uh that's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's not gonna Very happen. Good I, got intro I, got, I got something in that I will play though. Well, you guys didn't give me a heads up on this, so I'm thinking, I'm like, what are no, we, 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 look, we don't even know what's going on, Mark. All right, so don't we worry. Just, oh, oh, it, it, it's okay. Look at my new goodies. Yay, oh, I finally got oh, them. Wow. I mentioned this on Facebook <laughs> a couple weeks ago that um, I was actually, this is, a, this is an interesting story. So I got the full France 1940. And then I realized, oh, this didn't come with mountain maps. Why? Why didn't it come with mountain maps? Anyways, 
So I went to, I said, oh, I'll go back and just order the mounted maps. So I yes. did. I oh, and since go. I was there, I'm like, I wonder if they got Great War Commander in. And so I did. And I placed the order. And then I get an email from them saying, oh, guess what? We don't have the mounted maps anymore. Uh, wow. Uh, they are a pain because you've got to have somewhere to store them oh, for, for videoing. And also, you don't have to get the plexi out and yeah. all that. It's it's just, just, and I know people prefer the paper maps, and that's fine. There's oh, no right right or wrong way. Not uh, as an argument about clipping I'll, or moving. I love a good mounted map. It's a preference. I'll, I'll use the mounted map. Yeah. I, I would say I don't have anything against them. You know what it is, is honestly, for me, it's like just the fact that usually you got to like, and I know first world problems, right? But it's like bend it backwards, and put stuff mm. on it. The, the only map I've ever seen that was mounted that laid out flat right out of the box. Well, actually, Luca has a couple that I've done in, uh, I'm trying to think. No, yeah, like Bismarck and stuff, but was World in Flames. Just, I mean, uh, I'm not kidding oh. you. That map that came in the, mm. the collector's edition box was made in Czechoslovakia, I think, and you just lay it out like literally right out of the box, just laid flat. Wow. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, you have to nine times out of ten, I have to get me big heavy World War Two series books out and put them on top of it or a couple of or a couple of heavy games and leave it yeah, overnight. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what I got my unconditional uh, I'm doing a series of videos right now on unconditional surrender because I'm mm. gonna be playing that at uh gmt west and i have a mounted map and so anyways yeah, yeah I'm a bit, to of, use bit of preparation yeah 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 and it's okay like you said yeah. first world problems you know it's like and the other big thing is for me is storage it's extra storage so um you've got to find somewhere to put the blooming things but yeah, yeah i love surprised them. That it didn't well, come with the already taken map. over half the lounge already yeah i know they're on the they're on the table here you can't <laughs> see they're over the back on my other table I, I it's wish I could show you turning guys. Into, turning into Jester's room now. Yeah, I can't terrible. even think correctly. What, what I did get that was brand new because I had pre-ordered it, you know, a while back, and, <laughs> and that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, but, um, that's one I use, Mark. Is, uh, right, it's a good one. But honestly, is uh, and it, uh, from Compass Games, I just got uh, burning uh, burning banners. Or the oh, I was going to mention that games. it's a yeah. fantasy war game, isn't it? And it's incredibly heavy i mean like literally like i don't know what it weighs but i haven't even opened it yet but i did get that new the other day and i'm excited to um, i'm looking at that but it's so that. expensive see we don't get the the only thing that works for up for me and it's a few quid cheaper a few pounds cheaper is, is the p500s it does work out you know 10, what about second 15. chance games? No. Yeah, but of course they have to put their bid on. That's why mm -hmm. I order stuff when I don't. So I'll order Compass games and uh, Legion games because I can't get them cheap like you do because the shipping kills it. But that burning the banners is, is like about £140. That's like $180 or something, $160. I, I, th I think what is crazy is the shipping because yeah. – I will tell you this, like if I want to ship a game to Europe and I know I'm not a company, right? And I know they even get little breaks for that. It's super expensive. But if yeah. I buy something from Europe, it's, I'm not saying it's cheap. But, but it's, it's, it's cheaper. not two way, is it? It's not the same. No, you it's know? not. Whereas you it's, spend, it's, you'll spend $60 to get it to me. I'll spend thirty dollars to get it to you. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really it's 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 weird. It's like even that, shipping to Canada is like that. Oh, like, that's like an alien planet, Canada. They, that, it's like everything, <laughs> dear. You know, their their money is worth a fifth of a dollar. You know, and it's right, uh, right. And they're no, shipping no, terrible. Yeah. Yeah, no, but this burning the banners, um, my own worst enemy has done an unboxing of it, and it's it looks really cool. Uh, it's a two player, but he said, "Sod that, I'm going to play it solo." So you know, any game can be played solo. I think if you jig it about a bit, depending on what the hidden information is. But it's got huge maps, and it's uh, it looks nice. It looks really hey. good. Anything soluble, especially for us old timers. And, and, and don't get me wrong, I like the bots. I like all the stuff that's being done now, right? Yeah. But it is funny anytime somebody asks me, "Is that soluble?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, absolutely. You can just do it two handed." Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I get told off for for not playing as many games face to face. I do play a few, you know, with with the guys and you know, with Tweez and and uh, at the conventions and that. 
Uh, but yeah, solo. It's got to be a you know. I've got no mates. I, I got a. I got a. Uh, I was going to share. Was I was thinking about this? Like, and I'm not going to go grab it or anything. But like a, sometimes for my channel, and this might sound nuts, but I like doing it, so I do it. Is I'll buy a shrink wrap copy of a game, and uh, that'll be my trip down memory lane. I'm like, okay, here we go. We're you know 12 years old. We're going to open this box. And That's the thing with old games, it's the the memories. Memories. yeah, it's got to be know? unpunched or shrink wrap. If it's punched, you've always got that worry that there's a counter missing. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, I've had oh, that. Yeah, yeah somebody, uh, <laughs> And I've only missed encounter. Oh my god. That Dude. happened to me once when I bought a copy of Avalon Hill's Third Reich from someone. And I started to set it up to play, and I'm missing something. I can't find this piece. So I decided I pulled up it on BGG. Someone had a scan and I started to put them all in, in, in a row to find them all. And I found out I was missing like 30 some counters. Oh my God. Like, oh, I can't play this game. <laughs> so what'd you do to fix it? Did you go buy another copy? I, I, I just put it on the shelf. Haven't touched it since. <laughs> or, or like what, when it happened to me, I think I had a counter or two missing. I got that bloke upstairs to print me out. A couple of replacements. See, and here, here, just to, here, just to here, it out a couple of replacements for me. And, and here, I, here, I, I thought you know how to do that yet. Here, I thought you were going to share a story to show you how anal I've been, even since I was a kid. I always want the original, right? So, but, mm. but uh, I remember when I was a kid, I lost one of my squad leader pieces, right? And I'll never forget. I was like, and you know, and I was old enough, evidently, I had, must have had the money because I remember I called Avalon Hill. And I ordered a whole counter sheet because I was missing one counter. Right? I know it's terrible, <laughs> <laughs> terrible. That's crazy. But That's that game looks that thing. game looked good, so I may have to keep my eye on that one. <clears throat> but all I've been doing, because you know, I've I've got my speed paints now, and I've been painting some more models. Very nice. Oh, nice. Where are you going to put the paint on them? They've got the paint on there from Mars. Oh, okay. I, I dabble in miniatures. I think my favorite, I have bolt action and I have uh, a Hail Caesar and, of course, Epic, the Epic Scale stuff. From yeah, I, I won't do military figures. It's weird, but fantasy and uh, space. No, it's not weird at all. Because I was going to I was gonna say my favorite miniatures game, though, and I don't get to play it very often, but I've had it for years, is the... Uh, I did get to play it about a month ago. Is the Games Workshop uh, Lord of the Rings? Ah, love, all right, yeah, it. yeah, yeah. And yeah, because I think the attraction is for me, it's 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 basically medieval combat with a little bit of magic. Yeah, uh, and the rules don't change every couple of years. <laughs> no, unlike some we could mention, He's enjoying painting Shadows of Brimstone. Yeah, he he and me and Mike were, were Shadows of Brimstone uh, nuts. I think. You should do a live stream when you're painting, and oh. it makes it go a little bit faster. I I used to do that, and people would come and just yeah. I mean, watch I mean, paint I'm and getting ready to paint. And... I mean, it's it's based in black, and then I'll dry brush gray mostly right. over it, and then a bit of white over. Rough the top is there a uh, rough? Is there a reason you don't do military? I'd find that boring i think painting 150 the same units you know in their blue or red uniforms or or khaki uniforms there, there's um, some great speed painting videos out there though. yeah and I, that's what i use now I've, I've, I've just bought the the metallic speed paints and i mean okay i mean the lights and shades on that come up brilliantly because of the way no, you looks, prepare, uh, prepare uh, the model yeah, i mean I that's one to... that's one coat I mean, I know it's the same color, but it's a monster. But it's the same with the figures, with the no, characters. I, I used to totally hate painting, and now I can. Yeah, I love it, it now. Yeah, uh, I, I can tolerate it. it. I'm terrible. I'm terrible at painting. Like I have Star Wars Rebellion, and I love that game. Love the miniatures in it. Would love to have them all painted and everything. But I, I, I'm terrible at painting. If I, it would be a horrible mess. <laughs> You yeah, only get better true. with practice. I learned that. Yeah, I'm you not do. And good, I mean, but... I've been painting on and off for. God knows how many years, 30 odd, 40 years, I mean, maybe. That like, means less time to play war games, though. That's what I, what I want to show you guys really quick is my wife paints. Now, she doesn't play, but she just loves painting, right? And of all 
god off well it's, it's space marines oh so, right warhammer mm. oh. Oh. Yeah, see, very, yeah see brilliant you know very nice yeah. like she, i have a probably a, com a company of these over the years like she loves painting them she, she doesn't play at all but. No, and you don't have to paint them. You're not going in for a comp. Some of them you see are fantastic, but they take hours. Each figure takes hours and hours to paint. I just want mine table ready. And I, I wish my wife would paint mine. She won't. She goes, nope, they're yours. You paint your own. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I'm right there with Phoenix Knight in the chat. Yes, my, my artistic talent also doesn't go past stick figures. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, Phoenix Knight. Give yourself a little bit more credit. He's he was um two two years ago. He was like, I'm thinking about starting a cooking show, but I'm not very good at it. And I'm like, you should do it because it'll be good for you. It'll 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 get you uh it'll get you you know some viewers. It'll get you some subscribers. And you'll never yeah. believe it. He's doing a great job. He's did he's, another he's, one. He's now a war gamer. He never was. And now he's and a war gamer. gamer. Yeah. yeah. These are my guys. These are Warlord uh, yeah. 28 millimeter. Not very <laughs> Yeah, that would bore but... me to tears, you know, painting but, the same yeah, thing you know over what? and these over. Are gonna, I know, but I don't know. These are going to look okay from they my look, rule is They look great on away. the table. But again, the other thing with miniatures wargaming is you've got to have a blooming big table and lots of rulers and things. It, it doesn't. Well, it just have, doesn't appeal to me. I have three eight, four by eight tables. So. Yeah. And I have a wall. If, if anybody's seen my videos or pictures on Facebook, I have a wall in a very small game room that my wife's allowed me. It's uh, it's a ten by four uh, sheet metal, and I use that for my vertical magnetized stuff. Yeah, it's great. It is. It's quite therapeutic, and you know, there's nothing worse than putting gray on a table. You know, gray a gray <laughs> miniature. It's one of my. I think I've shown it before. One of my shadows of brimstone monsters. Oh, nice, nice. No, I love miniatures. I just, I much prefer board word games because I that and that's like, do I paint today or do I? And almost always, board war gaming wins out because I can open a box, read a set of rules, and I'm in a brand new historical yep. period. Here, here's or, what I noticed: yeah. uh, all the people that paint and enjoy painting also you know that's part of the process of getting your game ready you roll counter clip too i bet i'm a counter clipper except yeah, asl i will not clip asl oh but thankfully don't have to clip anything here no you don't no they've got those center blooming nibs i'm gonna have a word with patrick when i see him <laughs> and I get rid of them well, nibs. I gotta tell you, VUCA simulations. I mean, I'm a huge fan, but they no gray on the table. Uh huh. Yeah. Ah, I've watched no your gray. channel. I've watched. I've watched his because he does baseball. He does baseball. Yeah, I'm watching his channel because you know me. I'm a, a recent convert to baseball. Yes, yeah, no gray uh, on the table. Yeah, it looks of terrible. Swordsman, the war gamer is now because of me and several other people. Are doing sports games now. Wow. Phoenix Knight's doing baseball on his channel now. It's I have becoming a question. it's oh, becoming man. a fad. Yeah, I enjoy my baseball game, um, season ticket. I enjoy that and I play it and I haven't recorded it yet, but uh, there's lots of things I haven't recorded. Stop it. So um yeah, I enjoy it. And I've got into it. I'm gonna go and see the uh uh, New York Mets and the Phillies in June coming over here playing. So we've got our tickets. We're looking forward to that. And that's I guess great. that's going to cost me a few bob to get a few hats <laughs> so I can start a collection. But there and we are. You, and get you some bobbleheads too. Oh, bobble! I love them when they advertise them. Yeah, I've got my like I've got my Red Sox <laughs> stuff. I can't say I'm a huge fan, but I grew up in Boston, so all my teams oh, you've got to be a Red Sox fan then, yeah, yeah of course. Or none, or no question. hair, or no hair, Mike. Yeah, there's, I have, more, I there's more gray in your hair than on the table, then there's a problem with you. <laughs> I, I have a question about the baseball game. So years ago, and I actually recently bought a newer edition, but I haven't got to it. I have one friend that's like, hey, let's play, you know, is a Stratomatic baseball. Um is there any other, and I'm going to look it up in a minute, but baseball games that you would recommend for solitaire play that's kind of fun? Like, because honestly, I don't, uh, I don't you know. 
I have twenty different recommendations for you if you're I, interested. I, I play, I play I all plastic <clears throat> baseball, payoff pinch baseball, Afro yeah, baseball. No. I mean, okay. I would watch um, watch a few people on the internet, watch and see because every game's just slightly different. Rough okay. play is what season ticket, right? Season ticket. You can get that for free and download a few teams and all. Yeah, the you can download a few teams. You can print free. them out. And it's you're free. Ready to go. Okay, because I like the crunchiness of like Stratomatic. I always thought that was fun, and I know you can solitary do your lineups and you know you're rolling. But it's not I mean, quite Jesus as much it's fun. Quite yeah, there's the History Maker like Baseball. What John yeah. said, my plays. <laughs> history Maker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't get it. Well, you can get it. Well, you can't. You know, it cost a full. I'd like to try that one out. Beer, hot dog, and seventh inning stretch, nothing better. We're going you know, to turn you know. this into a sports 24 hour <laughs> sports channel. We got sports for YouTube. Yeah, we're going yeah. to talk sports only right there. No, I know just... nothing about football, just uh, football, like baseball. I just enjoy playing it and, and watching it. You know, well, I, mean, I, I have a question about a football game too, because, and I say, I tell people this all the time. I am not. Uh, football fan i'm a new england patriots fan and that's because not because they were good the last 20 years but because i, I thought that explained them. why you're not a football fan what's that <laughs> i thought that explained why you weren't a football fan right well you know when i was a little kid sunday italian dinners were a big deal and the adults would sit around and drink beer and we'd eat all day and i was a little you know a little kid but you know for a lot of years the new england patriots were like oh who are we gonna lose to this sunday you know, so. <laughs> but uh, and I'm still Ooh. a fan, even with, but I'm, um, but yeah, but there's a game Ooh. called. I'm looking. Gosh darn! I just had it on my screen. Ah, uh, yes. I want to say it's called I can't First wait to and hear Goal. About this. It's a football game called First and Goal. I think. Yeah. Have you <clears> ever <throat> heard of it? Somebody did a replay on YouTube, and I was watching it, and it's a dice game, and you know, you pick your play, and but it looked really. Have you, any of you heard of it? Because it looked really interesting. I've heard of it. I've never played it, so like I don't know anything about that day. one. So I've okay. played Inside Blitz. I've played Second Season. Uh, I've Go played Apple Football. I played Stratomatic Football, but I've not played the other one. So you want to see the amount of boxes of cards this man has got? You don't want to see. <laughs> don't you don't want to see? Like here's just some of my stack that I haven't been able to put away over there. Wow. You know, amazing. I remember Jester one one time on uh, on one of the, the war rooms that you got a package, and it was it was like a thousand card sleeves or something like that. It was just there were so many. You kept stacking them on your desk, and it like covered the camera and everything. <laughs> yep, and now I've gone away from sleeves. That's yeah, and that's fair enough. I, I, I mean, I spend, you know, I have to, I have to have everything. So it's just me, just my uh, preference. But Ian's played. Um, uh, first to go is from 20, 2011. Uh, it's it's not play. hard to find. I found a bunch of them on eBay oh, for like enough. 15 bucks. Uh, Ian's oh, played the baseball yeah. highlights 2045. That's the futuristic one, isn't it? It's kind of um, Robot. a euro -y. It's not, it's, it's more of like a, a management but isn't it uh, robots and things? And it is like actually replaying like baseball games. Yeah, Obviously. but it's got cyborgs in it and robots and things as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of like a futuristic. Yeah, thing. I mean they're doing the reason I know about it. They're doing it on. There's a new Kickstarter for it with uh, bits and pieces, but it didn't appeal to me because of that. Well, I know you... that uh, Mike's going to have some information about yeah. something coming out here in the oh, next couple of weeks, but he's not allowed to say anything. But well, maybe remember we'll we talked about this. Yes, we well, remember. Yes, yeah, because remember also... we talked about baseball on the channel, so. right? But also, yeah. our our channel is known throughout the YouTube universe for world premieres. All developers, designers, game manufacturers, they all come here to. Uh, Rough swordsman, or do you guys in general? No, us the, the war room. So, ah, uh, gotcha. Okay, yeah, good. It, uh, good. we are. Yeah, how many? I've lost count of how many world we've premieres. Done, we've we debuted uh, Mr. President. We were the first one. We were debuted uh, Palm Island Horror. We've debuted Wolfpack. We debuted quite a few games so far. Nice. nice. So, and hey, Mark, let's get back on topic here. No, no, Mark, sorry. yeah. So, what is your 
sweet spot when it comes to war gaming. What do you enjoy the most? Is it World War II, World War One, Ancients? I know Nate's a big Ancients guy. I'm gonna, okay, so that's a really loaded question, but I, I'm actually going to answer that with uh, more of a type of uh, game because I I'm a fan of them all. If I thankfully I don't have to pick one historic period, uh, but I would say. Oh boy, sweet spot. Like a lot of people, I think World War II. But what I was going to say, here's how I'm going to answer that. And I play everything from, like I said, ASL all the way up to GMT's World at War. My sweet spot, I got to say, is definitely like strategic level games, like World at War for, you know, and that's not just one. I'm a big fan of Axis Empires from uh, Decision Games. Um, uh i just got the fate for all from uh, uh oh that line. Really good. yeah um i civil war strategic world war one i'm a huge fan of um i've played a couple of really good i've played a lot of strategic levels so when like sweet spot for me I just like the whole idea of can I conquer the world or can I defend the world for world democracy or can I, you know, manage a country? And I, you know, people all the time will say, because a lot of people know that that's me, but they'll be like, hey, Mark, you know, is GMT World at War, how does that compare to World in Flames from, from Australian Design Group? And I'm like, I love them both for very different reasons. And I won't even try to compare them because it's like apples and oranges. It's, it's, um, it's, but yeah, you know, but I do, I just love like, you know, like I said, right now I'm preparing to play uh, a GMT West uh, unconditional surrender, which I played when it first came out. Um, <clears throat> I got a, a four player game. We meet up every Sunday and, playing Axis Empires Deluxe Edition. Uh, I know. That's, uh, you, Nate's just got that as well. Yeah, oh, that's wonderful. Really good. Bonkers, I, I've yeah. played Krieg ever in all its iterations. It came out, in, Krieg came out in 1993, came out at a, at a local convention, and I like to say it succeeded in spite of itself. The rule book for Krieg was so bad. Mm -hmm. Like, there were examples of play in the... Um, or example rules in the examples of play sure and i remember when it got released there at pacific con like which is a local regional convention there were like spontaneously three or four games of it going well the rule books for this ultimate edition just look great like oh they're wonderful it's step literally a, step two yeah, it's it's very playable you don't have to read like you read oh, the get rid of that rules. then ah. better get rid of that then you do <laughs> yeah the, the like the ultimate edition some people really freaked out about the price but it's i gotta price, say this yeah. if you oh but it's huge there's so much yeah. stuff in there. and it's it's huge it's mm -hmm. beautiful component wise and look for me i've always said this for my entertainment dollar i'm on my second four player game well if okay. you're doing that mark it's worth every penny i mean i don't think i'd ever play it you know on my own right. um, I don't it is solid could. terrible i will say that yeah it's but it's gonna be a, it's gonna right. be a bit of a thing isn't it i'm not sure i will ever get my money's worth out of it i'd love to own it right. i'd say it took me forever to clip the counters <laughs> yeah i clipped it before we played i was the guy I had to clip my set i sleeved all the cards yeah and, uh, you got to and uh i will I, say I, this I, it's, yeah. it's I, I'm just a huge fan of that. Like yeah. I just, I love it. It's 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 phenomenal. Mm -hmm. like, I, I would rather that. just spend the extra money and buy a a game that's already pre rounded. So there you go. It's kind of like block games. Like I, I'm not. I it took me a while to kind of warm up to block games, like the Columbia games or. You know, there's a lot of different. Oh, companies. you've heard of Columbia games? Oh yeah, you not, you, yeah. These no, two no, Yahoo's no. over here. They've never heard of a Oh, my God. Game. They're never so... I, no, yeah. I've heard of Columbia. No, no, heard of no, it. Let's get this straight. We've heard of Columbia games. We're just not block game players, so we don't exactly. know much about Never them. heard of a block game before, Mark. You're We've talking, heard of them. You're talking Chinese. Oh, right. these two. They've he's never heard anything. anything. He's, he's, he's gaslighting wow. us. He's doing it. You know. He's well, doing yeah, I was going to say it's a, those kind of games are almost more valuable to buy them when they're pre-stickered. 
Because hmm. then you don't get to do the work, right? Oh, you know, the, they are some work stickering. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I got you know, like coming, coming, coming out of Europe, you got some good companies there. Yeah. Uh, what's it? Vento Nuevo, I think, yeah. in uh, Italy. You know, some people aren't fans of his stuff. I think they're great. I think um, the, the quality looks really good. I mean, VUCA, of course, is over here. We've got Hexasim. You know, this is the continent we're talking about. You know, little, I got to say, kudos. I, I want to mention this. Like, I love VUCA, or, you know, mm. out of the gate. I've met him at Consum Expo. And then Uve over at uh, Sound of Drums Games. And they've been like, I got to say, they've been, well, actually, the whole war game community. Thank you, everybody. has been very helpful in me and my wife's fight but those guys are just like just top-notch products uve over at sound of drums games like i helped him with his eyelow game that sh uh, should be getting in people's hands here yeah. pretty shortly and he wrote a really nice dedication to me in the game and i feel like okay like i mean i have learned to just accept love right so because that's what it is but um but uh, just some really good stuff coming out of Europe. Uh, and VUCA, honestly, they, as far as physical components, yeah, they set the standard by far. It's it's For amazing. Sure. For sure. Really I, I will say I'm very interested. Unfortunately, it's it's already out, sold out. But the the fate of all that you just mentioned a little bit ago from Thin Red, Thin Red Line Games. Yeah, that do. looks really interesting. Is that it another does. World War Three one? No, 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 no. It is uh, Operational Ancients. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Alexander the Great and then yeah. the Wars of the Diadochi. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I really like the 3D <laughs> effect that the map, I don't know if yeah, you see yeah. it, but it almost has a, it's hard to explain. It really does have almost a 3D effect when you lay it out on the table. Hmm. And you're just looking at the map. That's as far as I've gotten. So. Well, that and I watched an interview with, um, with them about where they want to take the, the system and for me since i love ancient rome i'm really excited that they said they want to pursue into ancient rome like caesar versus pompey or marius versus sola like some of the roman civil wars seemed really interesting so you, you'll you'll I, you'll nate you'll like this so you know you said big fan of the romans right and, yep. and i'm a you know really quick my father um when he was in school was studied the Roman empire and he was so into it that my name almost was, thank God for my mother, but it was almost Quintus Maximus. <laughs> <laughs> right. And my oh. name and they spelt it wrong is actually Mark Anthony Ruggiero, but they misspelled it's Anthony instead of Anthony. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. But yeah. I, I'm not kidding you. My dad, you know, this is the sixties, whatever, you know, but he was really into the Roman empire. <laughs> That's funny. Like I, I was that close to being called Quintus. Yeah. Well, you can you, well, you you mention that because we're going to remember your that. Life <laughs> school, your life at school would have been hell if you were been a Quintus. <laughs> it was hell as it is with <laughs> just my initials, right? Kids are cruel. We won't get into that. But MR, mm. you know, I don't know. You can draw the line. Yeah. But, but uh, I had a student once named, uh, named Augustus. And then another teacher friend of mine, she had a student named Trajan. And I'm thinking, oh, oh man. man, that's that's incredible. I love it. Yeah. No, my uh, <laughs> hello, Quintus. I know right people are. Well, but my but yeah, that's interesting. So what? So well, what are, I'm just curious because I don't know when. What well, I'd like to know what are maybe some questions from the audience or you guys like anything else you want to know? We've talked. A well, little I got a question. Yeah. Forget yeah. them. I got a question. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. Uh, my question is: Me and Ruff, we uh, we just hooked up with Tony and played. Uh, VJ Go on, try Anagara. it. Try it. Try it. Try it. Try it. Try it. Well. Oh, oh, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Okay, uh, we did that online. Do you uh, do you hook up with people and play games multiplayer online? Are you using the Vassal modules and stuff? Is that something you do or no? I'll say this. Um, yes, I, I do. I do use uh, Vassal, and I like, prefer to play it live, whether that's with Zoom or Discord or some other way to communicate. Um, I will say this, like it's what I like to say right now. I'm in a spot where my brain wants to do a lot more than my body lets me. So 
a lot of it has to do with balancing the time, you know, um, but I'm trying to, um, I'm working on some stuff right now. Like I said, I'm kind of an organizer and I'm trying to get some people together that want to teach, uh, uh, La Bataille, right? From oh, whether it's really? Clash of Arms or the Marshall Games, but yeah, no, I'm always up for that. It's a matter of um, like scheduling between my stupid chemo appointments and my when am I going to be awake? And I mean, I, it's a myriad of uh, problems, uh, challenges yeah. that I face, yeah. and I, I want to make sure that I I game you know, as much as I can. So yes. And then B I'm also working on, I mean, part of my channel is I want to be able to leave a, uh, I, like I said, I like to spread the joy of gaming. It's brought me so much joy in my life that I, that's really my focus. You know, like it, one of the things that mystifies me and people that do know me know I'm very active on Facebook and different war gaming groups too is, is, uh, <laughs> It always gets me the guy that says, well, this is the greatest game ever. It's my treasure. Da, 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 da. And there's always going to be somebody that says, oh, it's the ugliest map ever. Like, it's not yeah, constructive yeah, criticism. Yeah. And I just ignore that. But I, I got to tell you, it makes me really think, like, what's wrong with this person? Hmm. Like, <clears throat> why? you know, because, look, your treasure, my, it, it, it's all – we're all one, here to have a good time. Yeah. And, and, and it's the old saying we have over here. One man's meat is another man's poison. So, right. you know, yep. kudos, right? Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just great. You know, and I always remember, um, Ardwolf. He knows, he knows, uh, I love Panzer Grenadier and, uh, he tried it on his channel and, uh, he didn't like it. Oh, I love it. And he had a live stream. Don't you say you don't like it, Mark. And it's, <laughs> No, I and, love Panzer Grenadier. But he, he had a live stream, and he said, I was trying this, and, uh, you know, couldn't Yikes. get on with it. And somebody mentioned, he said, oh, Rough Swordsman's done a playthrough of it, and he loves it. And Ardor said, well, that's great. You know, he loves it. I, I can't get on with it. And that's how it is, you know. So yeah, that, it that's is, how it right? Yeah, I, I do. Yeah, I almost... yeah, that's part of the problem. But, I mean, the other thing is, there's many games that I've come across that I've played <clears throat> I didn't enjoy the first time. Sometimes it oh. takes a little while for a game to grow on you and kind of, yeah. You know, that, that happens you know to me to nearly every new war game that I get. I try, I set it up. I try to go through the rule book. I don't understand it. I rage quit, put it back and, and move on to something else. Then try again. I usually I rage quit two or three times. Then all of a sudden there's a moment where it clicks yeah. and I and instantly, Oh, this is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> do, do you ever do you, I, I, I want to share this with you guys and, and everybody is what's funny is, is uh, there's a couple of people that I'll watch their review and I'll still play a game even if they didn't like it, but and I know their tastes are pretty yeah. similar to mine. Right. But I got to tell you this. So I never forget this. So and this is when way back when, but the fire movement magazine came out great you know, review magazine way back in the day, but it had this review. And I think it, it really doesn't matter. I think decision games was printing it at the time, but somebody had did a review on GMT's air bridge to victory, which was one of their first three games they ever did. And I had played it a lot. Okay. Before the review came out and I'll never forget this. It just really stuck with me. I remember reading the review and I was like, and it trashed the game. Right. And it was like, it's obvious this guy never played the game ever. Like he read the rules, but he never played it, you know? Yeah. And, and that kind of leads in the, yeah. you know, what I was going to say, what amazes me and it kind of goes along with what Nate said, but it's like, you'll have a game come out and like a day later, there's people trashing it. And it's yeah, like, and that's, that's I didn't even have a chance yeah. to open the box yet. Yeah. Oh, it's hilarious to see people write ones for games that haven't even come out yet. <laughs> yeah, and that's why but I don't do reviews, Mark. I don't do reviews. I do playthroughs. Yeah, because I, I can't do review reviews, a game I'm going to play once or twice. I play through it and see people see if they like what they see, if they like the mechanics yeah. or they like – that's all I do. I don't review. And by the way, I am a big fan of Pan Panzer Grenadier. I yeah. enjoy it. I have it. I haven't played it recently, but I especially like the newer games because of the story arc they tell. Yes, they do. And they and, campaign and, them together now, don't they? Sort of thing. Yeah, yeah they, they do. I mean, I'm yeah. going to admit I didn't fall. I, I will say this. I love the historical notes. I like the games. Don't pre-order from the company. 
don't. I well, did it. It was a big mistake. I think everybody says that they're still waiting five years after ordering something. Get yeah, it from a from a retail shop. It's, a, you know? it's. A, I think it's wonderful. I think that what happens with people that play it that because I've introduced a few people to it and uh, first they didn't like it because it's not an immediate gratification. Like it takes time to develop the scenario. Yes, that sort of chip and, away, chip away, chip away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just like, I'm a huge fan of uh death ride system from Grodd. Oh, okay. I'm a humongous fan. I oh, helped yeah. never tried that. that. No, huge game. Very crunchy. Very, <laughs> I've done some videos on it. So you're more than welcome to look, uh, obviously. Um, but uh, it's definitely a game where people either hate it or love it. There doesn't seem to be a lot of middle ground. So, so Mark, I'm, I'm curious since I, I'm right there with you. I love the big strategic level games. I have, I, I have additional surrender. I want to get to it at some point. Currently I've been playing um, balance of powers from compass games. Ooh, I want to try uh, that. Yeah. So it's, hilarious. it's very good. Very, very good. Um, and uh, I'm curious of, kind of the process that you go through to learn these big games crunchy oh, okay. yeah like how how like everyone is different on how they approach learning a war game particularly right. if they're going to play it by themselves or like two-handed things like that so do you do you start going through like find an example of play that you walk through or do you just start reading the rule book or you know set up oh. counters to start moving stuff and you know fix things as you go along what I'll do, so I would say my approach to learning any game is I will read through the rules without trying to memorize it. You know, like obviously some things will stick, some won't. And then I'll set up a scenario, clip at the counters. I got to do that. <laughs> but I will, uh, and then I just start walking through it. I keep a notebook. So if I have questions, I write down, you know, my questions and then i now of course facebook's used a lot but i do use right. consum expo or consum world still at times but and then i'll figure out oh, who's this? and i'll email or message hey you know um but yeah so if that makes sense i read the rules and then i struggle through it by um just you know playing and sure. I will commit to learn a game. Now I've come up with like a system like GMT's World at War. I actually have a system I think that works if somebody wants to commit the time to learn it. Um, and by the way, the designer has wonderful videos now out. Yeah, so I've seen those. They're really good. Very, very good if you want to learn the game. But yeah, I, I honestly, I just, I play it. Now I don't, I don't tend to like just pull out counters and set up random stuff. I'll set up a scenario and start walking through it or you know and and uh you know almost any game right you got questions you got sure but i tend to um and i wanted i actually i don't really do home rules like a lot of people do that or what i don't know it's, or that's probably not the right word but you know what i mean like yeah you know I tend to want to play a game as it was created because you know, I figure this, like we don't have a hobby without the creators. We can criticize sure. designers and stuff. So you want to stick with the, the vision the designer had. Right. And if I want to play it out of the box, how they thought. And of course, if they modify it, great. And part of it's a time management, but yeah, that's how I learn it. And then I like to, you know, of course now I, I'll sometimes I'll go online and, and watch videos. And it's after I've read the rules usually. Okay. Um, and started because, look, I do replays. I make mistakes. We're all you. Yeah. Right? We all so, do that, Mark. No, don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, right. Um, um, you know, I did a series. But, yeah, so that's how I learn a game. No, that's. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I do I, that I, round the other way. I watch videos first, then get the rule book out with an understanding, hopefully, of uh, some play through. Yeah, that's what yeah. I do, Ralph. Yeah, but unless, cool. unless the video that you're watching is wrong, though, then you'll be playing it wrong. Well, right? I never, no, this is it. I never watch yeah, one of mine. I never fine. watch one of mine. <laughs> well, I, I will say this. So, so, Nate, like you said, everybody learns differently, right? I got to tell you what was interesting. I did a series of videos on the old Avalon Hill Anzio. Yeah, I saw those, yeah. And... and I told people in those videos, there was a guy in there. I can't remember his name. Oh my God. Just like Mark, you did this wrong or it was a better strategy. Wonderful input. And I actually put in the comments, I was like, 
hey folks, you need to go read this guy's comment. Yeah, that's great. And, I, yeah. and I tried to email him. We actually, I said, why don't you write like a player's guide? Because hmm. I mean, he's not gonna, but this guy obviously like has played a lot of Anzio, right? And, yeah. Oh yeah. And uh and you don't and, mind that when they're when they're kind and considerate and say, you know, you yeah, should it was uh, very this, good. I think you did this wrong, you know, it's great because everybody learns, you know, people right. watching the videos. See, I, I, for me, like I can't. I can't sit and just read a rule book. No. It's I, it's too boring for me, and like I I lose I lose track of what's you know going on because I can't visualize it. I'm a very visual person. Yeah. So I love in rule books, particularly now that like GMT's been doing a great job with the in the playbook is a full example of play, right. uh, and I'll set that up and follow. Do you like find that. them helpful? I do because as I, I go I've, through, see, I've tried them and I think no, oh, it doesn't work for me. Weird. See, I like it because like I'll go through and I'll have like the sequence of play out and and I'm mm -hmm. following through and then go to that rule and Same see thing. what is the example of play saying to do and here's the rule that is from and then once I see the connection, then it clicks for me. I, I would I just would add this little piece what I do too that helps me learn <coughs> when I'm playing it. I really like expanded sequences of play. Mm. And I'll follow that and 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 then I'll actually I I like to make a lot of notes. And so I'll note if it's not and game companies are getting better at here's the rules reference, right? Yeah. But if it's not there, I'll put like what the rules reference. And one thing I really like about unconditional surrender that, that uh, Sal did was he gives you different ways to learn the game. Yeah. In different rule books that you can use, whether it's oh, a sequence of play it. method or. A, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh, and if you ever try it, definitely go to the, the BGGs or the GMT site too, has the living rules. Yeah. And, uh, uh, that, that's Our, that's one I'm looking. I mean, I'm not a strategic person. I'm more tactical, grand tactical sort of stuff. There, there's the, a lot of replays, but, but unconditional surrender I've ordered on GMT because oh. everybody says it's a fantastic game. Yeah. It can be soloed. Get so, them on the map too. Don't forget. I, yeah, and I'm look. And I've ordered that, and <laughs> I'm looking forward to having a go at it. Yeah, no, that's it. I got to say, it's really good. I mean, luckily, I don't have to pick a favorite, but I really enjoy it. And it's very, it's actually pretty innovative. I think you'll see when you get it. And uh, you're going to want to go get the living rules, though, even though you, you know, just or even if you got like the whatever, it's been, it's out of print right now, but the second printing or whatever. Yeah, that's what I have. Right, you well, still got another B five hundred on, so that might be updated with the with the sort of newish rules. Yeah, the rules that are on the Living Rules site, I want to say, are dated twenty uh, twenty, is or it might even be later. And then on BGG, there is an update <laughs> that he did for the player aid cards, dated twenty twenty four. Well, hmm. let's hope the new one that comes out in a couple of years has all been updated. It will be, right? <laughs> yeah. But it, no, it, it really is a uh, really neat uh, system. And I'm glad to hear about that, about balance of power, because I really want to. Um, yeah, the, definitely go get the updated rule book on Compass Games' website, because uh, there are certain things that, that change um, the game and help help it make it a little bit more historical. Um, someone had done, there was a YouTuber that had done a bunch of videos on balance of powers and suggested some house rules and the designer really liked them enough that he just put them in the living rules. Oh, oh that's oh. awesome. Yeah. No, yeah. That, that, I think that's great. But that's it's great a when there's a two way conversation between mm -hmm. players or, yeah. or content creators or whatever you want to call them. And, uh, and the designer, you know, that's great when they, take on board because some like you know flatly refused no oh yeah yeah and that's not the way to do it you know you're, you're there to sell games and make people happy yeah yeah oh that's right that's well right. well what we want to do is take a little bit of a break here from discussion time can, we I, have can I just jump in quickly i've just had just just getting in some information from youtube that the like button has been sticking again so if you could push the thumbs up to make sure it works. 
That would be wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, hit that, hit that like yeah, button. That'd you. be awesome. We would really appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. So we're going to just take a few minute break. Everyone relax. Chill out for a minute. We're going to be doing some Nate's notes. <coughs> Rough remembers and Jester's Jeopardy. Mark, have you ever played Jester's Jeopardy? No, I've I've I seen uh, pieces of it though. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking of a game, Mark, and we're going to let you go first. I'm going to ask a yes or no question. Are we doing it and now? Wait a minute, we do it We're now. right now, yes. Well, where's, the logo? Right now. where's the logo? So where's the logo? Let me, wait, I want to hear the rest of the instructions. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get this work, and you're not going to use it. it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hang on, we got to <laughs> the logo. I'm just kidding. I don't, I, it doesn't bother me. No, we should get it. You're right. Here we go. There it is. Oh. Look at it. The, Ralph uh, remembers Jester's Jeopardy and Nate's notes. Look at that. All right. I love it. Mark, you get to ask the first. It's got to be a yes or no question. I'm thinking of a game, and you guys are trying to get it before 20 questions. Let's hope you can do it. Go ahead. Oh, I have to ask the question. You ask yes, a question. Yes or no, yes. Yes or no yeah. answer. He's, he's thinking of a game. And I've got a game. To, I'm thinking of a game. Oh, you're thinking of a game. Okay. Yes, Mark. Come on. A, yes or I mean, no? Come on. I don't think he's watched this. But he's lying. I have no idea. <laughs> no, no. All right. So yes or no question. Is uh, is it in the 20th century? <laughs> is it in the 20th century? Is it in the 20th century? Meaning what? 1900 to 1999. Meaning, yeah, 1900 to 1999. Yeah. That's the no, 20th. it's not 1900 to 1999. Sorry, oh, Mark. Okay. Mm. Rough. Nate, you're next. Oh, I'm next. Oh, oh, oh. You are next. Well, I'll just ask since uh, I, I'm afraid it might be. Is it a Columbia Games game? No. I was oh. going to say, is it a block game? You know? Yeah, yeah. There's rough. Quite, yeah, ask it, Rough. No, no, I think Columbus are the only ones that do the sort of. Uh, so you got two no's right off the bat. You're not doing very good, guys. Wow. <clears throat> You're terrible at this game. I think 18. All right, Ralph, go ahead. Uh, is the game's conflict set in Europe? No. That's three no's in a row so Good. far. You guys are off to a swimming start. That's up. We're always doing this well. <clears throat> am, I, I guess I'm, am I up? Does this yep. You're back up, Mark. Yeah, you're okay, yeah. Mark. Okay. Um, so let's see here. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, I'm not too great at this. About uh, – so it's not set in Europe. Is so it set in North America? Uh, yes, it is oh. set in North America, actually. Oh, well, that's narrowing it down. You've only had two conflicts <laughs> in that time period, haven't you? Is the game set in the 18th century? That is 1700 to 1799. No. Okay, so it's not the American. Not 1700 to 1799. No. So I'll just go for it and say, is it set during the American Civil War? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, it is. Ah, right. We're getting somewhere. Getting somewhere now. Six questions in. Is is it... Okay, so is it a strategic level game that covers the Civil War? For Yeah, the whole war. Hmm. Is this a strategic? No, no. Oh, okay. I don't believe it is. No. Not everything strategic, Mark. <laughs> yeah, Mark. Well, what I meant, I guess I can't clarify. It's not all but... about you, Mark. Good lord. No, I'm just no. All right, Nate. <clears throat> Maybe a, a game company. I don't know. What do you reckon? Yeah, I'm. Well, unless you got an idea, because we're rubbish. I at do, this. but. Go for okay. it. Is that is this game published by GNT? No, it's not published oh. by GNT. Okay, so it's not Rebel Fury. That was my thought. 
I'm not GMT. I just I told you that box. And I know. That's no, why I know. Know. You might be doing that doing like easy. a subliminal sort of suggestion, you know. There could have been. Um, is this uh, an MMP game? Uh, no, it's not an MMP game. That's how you say it in England. Well, since we're on a theme, how many questions are we down to right now? Oh, loads. That doesn't uh, matter. Wait, I don't want to ask that. That's not my question. Don't it? No. <laughs> is, it, is it Revolution? Is it from Revolution Games? Uh, no, it's not from Revolution oh, but a good one. Games. Is the game from Flying Pig Games? No, it's not from Flying Pig Games. It's another obscure blooming company. Yep, one you've that. never heard of before, ever in your entire career. You've never heard of this game. It could be Compass Games. It, it could, could be. be. Should I say it? Is yep. it your go? No, no, it's, it's, it's your go. It's your yeah. go, Ralph. American Civil War. I'm trying to think of other companies. <sighs> All right, is it a compass game? Uh, no, it's not a compass no, game. No, I didn't think it was. So you're nine questions in. You've been around the cycle three times. All right, shut up. Get on a bit. Nope, Mike, we already asked about Columbia Games. <laughs> Who's up next? You. You're up, Mark. Oh, you're I'm up. back already? Shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. These long yeah. answers right. come around quick. Um. You never heard of it though, huh? Is it? Oh, they uh, heard of Lone it. They Steel heard of it. We no, talked, he's been, he's we've been talked been. about this game many times. They've oh, heard he always, of it. He always says that. Is it from Holland Spiel Games? No, it's not from Holland Spiel, Mark. Sorry. We ha, let me ask this. Have have oh well. I don't want that to be my question now. Um if you've talked about it on here, I'm wondering if I've been on here since you've talked about it, but I'm not going to ask that. Um, what are you going to ask? Every week he's talked about it millions of times. He always says that. I know. Like if he talks about Columbia if, Games. If, if I will, I will literally give this game away. If, if, if at the end of this, somebody says, oh, I've never heard you say this, talk about this game. Is okay. Is the publisher still in business? Absolutely. Oh shit! Right. Okay. No oh, just demonetized us. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Good job, Ruff. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The problem is. All the good helpers in the chat are are have gone because I mean, you used to get good help from the chat, but not anymore, obviously. This, this whole game is about uh, narrowing things down so that you can pick out the answer. Right. <clears throat> is it a Worthington game? Uh, no, it's not a Worthington game. Chase. Wow. We're only going to be down to only a few. So you've got 12 questions in, eight to go. Oh, good. Let's get this, this over. Could be, this could is be it, the first it, failure we've had in the I'm going to do a total weeks. shot in the dark then. Go on, Mark. Go on. It, it, this is, is it from Historical Board Game Company? Oh. Is it from Historical Board Game Company? I've never heard of them. So no. There you go. He's not heard of, heard of them. Ah, you never <clears> heard <throat> of them. Okay. Wow. Who does American Civil War games we haven't met? Yeah, a Nordic. Um, I'm having Nordic. Nordic, you need to email me because we need to get you on the show when we do Jester's Jeopardy because obviously you're the only smart guy besides myself. <laughs> um, hmm. wow. I'm trying to think of what company does... Well, there's Legion, what? there's... Um... It's not GMT, it's not Compass... I can literally name like 20 other companies right off the top of my head. So going for company names is probably not the best idea. Okay. So is this a, I, I believe Mark, you asked a question whether or not it was on like the strategic level, correct? Right. And he said, no, he said, right. no. Okay. So is this, no. on, is this a tactical level game? 
Uh, it's a it's a single battle game, so okay, whatever so you would consider that, it's a okay. it covers a battle. Okay, so I don't I don't know if that would be considered is, tactical is or this, not. Yes, is, it is. is. Is this designed by Mark Lutman? Herman, uh, you're thinking of Herman Lutman. I'm being silly. Is it? Des designed by Herman Lutman. Yes, it is designed yeah, by Herman Lutman. Right. <clears throat> hmm. Tiny battle. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was just thinking. It's, it's, it's. It could be that, and I think the game is the devils, the devils to pay. It's not your turn, Nate. You just I know. calm down I'm, there. I'm, I'm, no, no, we're, no, we're having a conflab. It's the right. three of us are having a conflab. Okay. All right? Conflab away. You've got 15 guesses in. Uh, Mark, it's your go. Oh, boy. Um, is it Tiny Battle Publishing? Uh, no, it's not Tiny Battle Publishing. Oh. Oh, surprise. Did someone ask whether or not it was a revolution game? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Well, we placed the century, and he said no. He said no. Hmm. I think in Magnificent Style is Worthington. We said that, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's also... Mm, never mind. I'm I'll trying leave. to think who else does Civil War games. No, it's a, Mark, it's a Herman Lutman game. Herman Lutman. Right. And it's not uh, Tiny Battle. It's not Flying Pig. It's not... Um, so I'm just thinking... Have we said here. Flying Pig? Yes. Yeah, they I, did I, a I, most yes, fearful slaughter. Pig, so. Yes. And it's not Tiny Battle, right? Yeah, I just asked battle, that. But it is? Mm. Mm. So it's not that little, that series. Yeah, that but they're Herman, still in business. So. It's not that um, series that Herman's doing for Tiny Battle. Oh, mm. didn't we bring out some other? Isn't he, didn't he have games on White Dog and then he moved to Blue Panther? Okay, I'm just going to highlight all the people that were correct for the last 10 minutes as you guys are sitting here talking, ignoring their conversation again. Are you saying it's the it's not the Worthington in Magnificent Style? It's the Victory Point? No, I'm talking about Victory Points games in Magnificent Style. Thank That's you a tough very one, much. It's just like, I know they're still in business Woo! technically, but... They are still in business. Like okay. you've never heard of this before or something. Yes, we've heard of it, but um, Victory Point not was, publishing it anymore. It's now I think that was a little version. cheeky. I think that was a little cheeky there. I yeah, mean, a little cheeky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it was originally published by Victory Point. I know they're still going, but I don't think they publish it anymore. No, no. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Did you ask the question that this designer is still, or this publishing company is still publishing it? No, I don't recall that question. Oh, no. I think, technically, I think that was a bit cheesy. That That's a little yeah. bit below the belt, as they say. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. But well done. What do you guys we, in? We got, the, we got there in the end. Not yeah. very <laughs> good. All right, Praise Lord, it wasn't a block game. Roth, your turn. I'm on, am I? You're okay. on. Uh, what are we doing? 30th of uh, March. We'll it's start at uh, 1750. It's the birth of John Stafford Smith, an English, English <laughs> composer. He is best known for writing the music for the American patriotic song, The Starred Spangled Banner, an English composer following the War of 1812. In 1931, he was adopted as the national anthem of the U.S. of A. 1775, the British Parliament passed an act forbidding its North American colonies from trading with anyone other than Britain. And I think the following month, the war started. 1856, the Treaty of Paris is signed, ending the Crimean War. Mm. Now, the Crimean War was fought from October 1853 to February 1856 between the Russian Empire and ultimately victorious alliance of the Ottoman Empire, weirdly, France, the United Kingdom, and Sardinia, Piedmont. The reason geopolitical causes of the war included the decline of the Ottoman Empire, the expansion of the Russian Empire in the preceding Russian-Turkish wars, 
and the British and French preference to preserve the Ottoman Empire to maintain the balance of power. If you think about it, that's quite like, whoa. But that's what they wanted in the uh, concert of Europe. The flashpoint was a disagreement over the rights of Christian minorities in Palestine, then part of the Ottoman Empire, with the French promoting the rights of Roman Catholics and Russia promoting those of Eastern Orthodox, or, or Orthodox Church. The churches worked out their difference, differences with the Ottomans and came to an agreement, but both the French Emperor Napoleon III and the Russian Tsar Nicholas I refused to back down. Nicholas issued an ultimatum that demanded the Orthodox subjects of the Ottoman Empire be placed under his protection. Britain attempted to mediate and arranged a compromise to which Nicholas agreed. When the Ottomans demanded changes to the agreement, Nicholas had enough, recanted, and prepared to war. Prepare, prepare for war. So that's uh, something I've learned about the causes of the uh, Crimean War. And there's a famous poem, The Charge of the Light Brigade by Alfred Lord Tennyson, and the first uh, verse of which goes, half a league, half a league, half a league onward, all in the valley of death rode the 600. Forward, the light brigade, charge for the guns, he said, into the valley of death rode the 600. It's a great so, painting. Well, it's a great, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. It's not, but it's great. 1936, whizzing forward. British announced the construction of 38 warships, the largest construction program for 15 years. I think they knew something we didn't in 1936. <laughs> yeah. 1939, the Heinkel H HE uh, 100 fighter sets a world airspeed record of 463 miles per hour. The Heinkel HE 100 was a German pre-war World War II fighter aircraft designed from Heinkel. Although it proved to be one of the fastest fighter aircraft in the world at the time of its development, the design was not ordered into series production. Approximately 19 prototypes and pre-production examples were built. And I have a picture. Let me stop sharing that and get up uh, the other one. And... Uh, Hold on, let me get that up. It's going to be a proper size. And no, be... yeah, well, look, I won't disappoint you. I won't disappoint you. Look, oh. look uh, I'll be behave. Is it going to be minuscule again? No. no, it's going to be a nice size. Look at that. Look, lovely. Share it, share it. Are you kidding? Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, we don't want that one. Oh, that's, what my, that, that's, that's, my that's the HE 100. Wow. Oh, 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 it's it's not. That's an interesting plane there. That up. Let's get that up again. I'm useless at this. Hold on. Present. Share. Share. And window. No, oh, I've lost it. Oh, poop. Do, do, do. Don't panic, Mr. Mannering. Right. Can you bring your son in and do it for you? Yeah, yeah I, I probably will. There we are. Let me just. Uh, Make that bigger so you don't moan at me. There we are. Uh, I like Nordic's question. Is the cat any good at Norman Conquest? No, he's uh, terrible. There we go. Look at that. Oh, man. What a weird look. It's a, quite a weird. It looks very Russian, like the Russian World War II play. Like yeah. Yeah, 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 right yeah. but it, it was never put into production. Weird. I like how you can count the pixels on the picture too. You know? Yeah, I know. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> no, that is interesting. I wonder why I was never put it. But it's, you say it looks Russian, which kind of makes sense, right? Because I think weren't they doing a lot of their testing in Russia before? Yeah, they were. Yeah, they yeah, yeah, both yeah. Of them cooperated. Yeah. Yeah. That's Where were we? We're, we're near the end. Don't worry. 1944 saw the Allied bombing raid on Nuremberg. 795 aircraft were dispatched from along England's east coast, including 572 Lancasters, 214 Halifaxes, and nine Mosquitoes. The bombers met German fighter resistance at the coasts of Belgium and the Netherlands. In total, 95 bombers were lost, making it the largest bomber command loss of World War II. And in 1945... World War II, Soviet forces invade Austria and capture Vienna. Polish and Soviet forces liberate Danzig. 
and that's uh, today, 30th of um, March. Neat. I like that. Wow. Neat. Very cool. Great. All right. So, Nate, do you have something to remember? Or, I'm sorry, do you have some notes that you want to I share? Do, I do have some notes, yes. And, and Before something... you, share, you share your notes. Oh, though, sure. Right? Go ahead. Uh, we have this wonderful color photo here. <laughs> this is my <laughs> color. That's uh, a really nice one. I know. Look at I'm that. getting a bit fed up with this. You know that. <clears throat> getting a bit fed up with this. I look, I do my best, you know. That's that, all we can ask. That is, that's all you can ask, isn't it? Off you go. All right. <laughs> Alrighty, so but and 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 uh, lock and load. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Lock and Cheers load. everyone for watching. So I do have something that I mentioned to you, Ruff, earlier. Um that uh, I was thinking of you when I picked this book. I actually have two of them. So if you're playing this, you'll love this game. I love it, yeah. Great, great game. There is a <laughs> great book that goes with it. This one. About the entire history of World War II at sea. Now, it's a little thick, but it reads really well, really fast. Um, and it's a good, really good overview of everything involving... Um, naval actions in World War II. Um, I'm a particularly, I really love like his, uh, Craig Simmons, his style of writing because he he writes in in a lot of stories. And I really love those, those stories that really help you connect what's going on. Um, and one, one thing that he wrote, I, I really liked um, the chapter on where he spoke about how right after the fall of France, that Britain had to decide what to do with the French fleet that was at anchor in, uh, in Algeria and um, <clears throat> French, an ultimatum more or less on either you give up the fleet or you sail it to our, our bases and give it up or we're going to sink you. And yep. the Brits That's decided right. to, and we know what happened. Yeah. Yep. At Mayor's Al Kabir. Um, yeah. I have that book. I was just looking like, oh, I got that book. I guess I better read it. It's yeah. a great, great book. <clears throat> so that's the whole the Atlantic and Pacific uh, naval war, is it? Correct. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Does it deal with the Bismarck? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. And uh, so, if you're playing any Bismarck games or you know anything, anything World War II naval, that that book um, is a great overview. Well, we'll need that book when um, Jerry brings out um, Pacific Chase. Pacific Chase. Chase yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And then if you're into a little bit of Eastern Front, which I love this game as well. It's a great game. I've got that um, on older. Yes, I'm a tinker. There is a great overview book for that called Operation Barbarossa, The History of a Cataclysm. Jonathan Dimbledy. Um, say this is a great book. Really enjoy it. It's it's a little thick again, but it reads really well and it gives you a Great overview of how the Germans. It's his uh, brother. His brother is a uh, was um, um, a TV presenter. So uh, oh okay over, in, over here yeah yeah yeah, da yeah yeah David Dimble yeah yeah yeah. Good David, to see right? I've chosen wisely in some of the books I bought because I have both of those. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <clears throat> I read them them yet, but... So that is my notes for today. Awesome. Oh, nice. And they, uh, Mark, you've already, you're, you're on ball. You've already had those two books, huh? I do. Yeah. I, well, I have, uh, yeah, I've got way too many books. One really quick. Let me just show you something. You guys all showed something. So I haven't read this yet, but I hear it's really good. I just got this for what, a whole two bucks at my local used bookstore. Oh, okay. Oh, right. All right. But yeah, it was $2 and, and, uh, I've been told it's a really good book, so I, I don't know. Yeah, it's a fascinating never... story about that guy. How, how do you, you you guys feel about a book written about a Japanese pilot that led, you know, Pearl Harbor invasion, you know, or, or attack? Because I know some people won't play the Japanese in games. Some people mm -hmm. won't play the Germans in games. You know, it's like I'm, I'm the guy that uh, – so I, I'll let the other two guys go in a sec. I, but i got to say, like, I'm the guy that – you know, I pulled out the GMT West one time, pulled out Labyrinth. And uh, yeah. I'm, I'm the kind of guy like, 
okay, I'll play the Muslims. I want to sneak nukes into New York City. Like, it, I don't know. It's, it's to me, they're games. They're yeah. about serious. But because I play Germany, am I a Nazi? No, because I... It, and I don't want to get into, there's a lot of mess of politics here in the States. Right no, now. you but, play games, you play, I'm going to play the bad guys, you know. I, it's a you game. know yeah. And I'll play the good guys. I yeah. actually don't have, like, look, war is horrible. War and we, it's a hobby that we like exploring the, the human <laughs> history of it, the tactics, whatever it is that attracts yeah. you. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I don't really have any. I think it's very interesting. I um, listened to a book recently on Tarawa, and uh, I can't remember the name for the life of me now. But uh, it was really good. And part of the guy really incorporated, there were like 12 Japanese soldiers that survived. And he incorporated what they had to say into the book. It was uh, Utmost Savagery, I think was the title. Okay. And uh, it was the first time I ever read where, you know, the author was like, it was a lot of details. Oh, this guy got killed this way, but it was also told overall. And it was like, you know, basically his thesis was, it's actually the one invasion where the, uh, uh, if the Japanese would have counterattacked on the first night. They probably would have wiped out the Marine bridgehead. And the reason they didn't was because the Japanese commander was killed moving from one HQ to the other by a random uh, naval shell. And it did talk about, unlike later in the war, it was typically like, oh, they'd get drunk and do these bonsai charges. Even the Marines that he interviewed for the book talked about, no, that it was, well, when they, it was too late, but when they did counterattack on the second night, it was well executed tactically, very like, you know, in other words, like, gee, the Japanese were actually, especially their naval landing forces, were actually uh, pretty competent soldiers. Mm, mm. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, so. like yourself, I, it's a game. I don't mind playing the bad guys because if you look into history, all sides did some dodgy stuff. So, uh, yeah, you know, no, right. yeah, yeah, but I don't mind playing, you know, the bad guys. And I, and I know and I appreciate and respect people that won't play the German, oh, I do too. Yeah, absolutely. The, the Japanese or even the Soviets, you know. So, uh, but um, I, I, well, here's what we're gonna do we're gonna open it up for questions for Mark. If you have a question and you want to ask him and you've never had a chance to, now is your chance to talk with him. We've we've kind of gone over some stuff that we wanted to ask him and talk to him about. Uh, if you have any questions that you want to talk to him about, anything that you think that you know would fit in. Obviously. Um, so while we're waiting on questions to pop up, Mark, is there anything? How how is things going with you with your medical? Is are things working through that or, or what's going well, on with that? Yeah, it's, no, thanks for asking. I'll try I'll give you this short answer here is uh because I'm like so really open about it on Facebook and I've talked about it in some of my videos. You know, long story short, I'm terminal, stage four pancreatic cancer. It's metastasizing. It's not visible. Eventually, my chemo won't work anymore, um, or they want to move me to a stronger chemo, which I'm not so sure I'm willing to go back to. So they're watching my CAT scans. And the reason I say not so sure I'm willing to go back to it is because I was on it before they did my attempted Whipple surgery. And if you want to know what that is, you can look it up. But um survivability is really low i mean just being you know it's five year survivability without whipples like eight percent and with whipples like 20 percent so um so i just you know that's it i've i'm very at peace with you know i want longer but i'm very at peace with you know, eventually I'm going to pass. Um, my wife, my family's taken care of, and she's got her own struggles, but she'll be taken care of. She's doing much better than I am. And, uh, uh, you know, I've learned to just enjoy each day, honestly. When it's a good day, I celebrate it. When it's a bad day, I get through it. And uh, it's honestly advice at anybody. There's so many things I used to worry about that I just don't worry about anymore. I think that's good advice for anybody. It is. Live each day, Live each day. yeah, yeah. Because long story short, and then we'll get, I see a couple questions pop up. Yeah. I was a workaholic. I 
you know, I don't want to say typical, but I'll stereotype myself. Typical male, work 60, 70 hour weeks my whole life, provided for my family. And uh, I regret doing that a lot, actually. Um, but not regret that I really dwell on it. Um, mm -hmm. But because I've kind of freed myself to let myself experience my emotions and move on. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it, and the war game community has been just phenomenal. I mean, I, just I, unbelievable, like in their support. And, <coughs> and I thank we're, you. We're, we're thinking about you and uh, yeah. you know, we're hoping for the best, obviously. And mm -hmm. um, let's just go ahead and get into some questions yes. here. Mark, what are some of your favorite series of games? That you have more than one title for the series. Well, you we can oh, see a load behind your head there that we made. I am so yeah. great. Campaigns, American Civil War is one of my favorites. But I would say, if I you know, I don't have to, but I love the Barbarossa series uh, for oh, Anton East Borders Coast series. Design. Yeah, I love that. Always have. Um, I think OCS is genius. I don't get to play it. Actually, I haven't played it in a long time, but I still have them and. and buy them um and i really enjoy honestly i did a kind of deep dive uh two that really stand out to me is uh the <coughs> Walt creek series from uh oh, okay. SPW. Back the i think just phenomenal um and then <laughs> and there's a few but i'm gonna just mention because i thought it was really genius with the recent passing of uh dean essig yeah, I see that. But the, no, I'm just trying to get my camera to focus on something. Oh, the, Sorry. The, with the recent passing of Dean Essig, he did some great, you know, Civil War Brigade, OCS, BCS. But I really loved his uh, Line of Battle series of games. Oh, okay. Um, he helped me a lot. Remember I, earlier I said how I take notes with questions? Yeah. He was phenomenal when I was doing my video series, me sending him questions and him getting back to me on stuff. Oh, that's cool. Um, and, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, that's just a few, but there's, those really stand out to me. All right. Christopher wants to know how many games you have and tough question. What is your favorite of all time? So at the height of my collection, which you may think is a lot, but I know people that dwarf mine tremendously. And I say the height cause I've been, have been selling off quite a bit. Um, I probably had about between fifteen and sixteen hundred uh, boxed games, not wow. counting magazine games. Um, whether and I always used to, and did I play them all? Hell no. Did I play a lot of them? Maybe not my copies, but I would play something in the series. And I'm a completionist, so okay. <laughs> you know. Um, and I'll say this though: I know a couple people that uh they're in their 70s now and they don't know what they're gonna do but i one guy i'm really great friends with and he's not online but uh he probably has closer to eight thousand games wow <laughs> but what i like to say is this is you enjoy your journey whatever it is i'm down to about 700 my ultimate goal <laughs> is hopefully before i have i can get down to about two or three hundred okay um What's a favorite? I think what's your all time what's favorite? All -time Not a favorite, fair yeah. question, but I'll answer it. Um, I don't have to pick, but if I did, I'm, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to go with advanced squad leader because squad leader played all the way through that 86 or 85, whenever ASL came out, do I play it regularly? No, but I've played it enough over the years where it's pretty ingrained. It's like a John Wayne movie. It's, uh, I just think, I, I really, I said earlier my sweet spot strategic level games, which is true. But ASL is such a, it's a great John Wayne movie in my mind. It's uh, just so many things can happen in it. And, yeah. you know, it gets, a, I think, a real, I think, you know, it's, it's honestly, it's very well supported game. It's, Super playable. You use like twenty percent of the rule book, ninety percent. Sorry, of the Mike. Time. I, I think I, uh, somebody's somebody's attacking Jester. I know. Is he okay? <laughs> you know, you know. Mark, have you got tons of ASL <laughs> stuff? I've never played. It's I'm feeling ill now. <laughs> Don't look, right? It's just pass the bucket. 
Mark, well, have you is. got lots of stuff? Because I've got the starter, a couple of starter packs, and I keep wanting to maybe one day Good. give it a go. But have you yeah. got lo- – because it goes on forever, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I actually recently uh, – my son – my both of my sons, neither one of them wore a game now. They play like 40k and some other stuff, mm-hmm. which is okay. Um, but my oldest son, who used to play ASL with me, and he's 36 now, be 37 this year, yeah. But, anyways, he uh, he said, Hey, dad, I want your ASL stuff. But I did recently sell a lot of scenario packs and stuff because it's just it's so much like like i yeah well i I, i've seen pictures of the because it's a a, it's a life game isn't it um and i've seen pictures of like a wall like this just full of these easily yeah there's so much of these things full full of counters yeah, no, you could. And you know, is it a lifestyle game? I don't know. I don't know that that's fair because I played tons of other games. When I hear that comment, I always think of I dedicate my life to this game. Well, there are some, well, I mean, some, some that do. I, yeah, no, so that's, that's okay. Yeah. It's okay. I actually yeah. respect that because yeah. they have the focus. I don't. Yeah. I'm like, and I'm like Jester. Shiny... <laughs> I'm like, dude, there's another shiny object over here. Right? Yeah, I'm the same. I'm the same. Shiny, you know, and yeah. that's why I never get anything played because I think, oh, shiny. Yeah. And like you, yeah. I get it out, read the rules, another shiny comes hey, in. Hey, nerd, are you going to GMT West? Yes, I'll be there, Mike. That's my plan. Yes. I got Art. a game of unconditional. When is the GMT West this year? Uh, it's April. Uh, the next one's April 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st. Oh, it's quite a long. I usually go a day early because some people do that, and but I'm not this year because I have chemo the day before. What, so sneak in an extra day of gaming? Is that what they say? That's, that's right. what they do. Yeah. yeah. So, Mark, I'm curious. Since you said you like the the East Front series from GMT, have you played all, like all three combined before? Yeah. This is a this is again. Yeah, we I used to. Them. So, so I said earlier, maybe people missed it. So GMT, I've been going to that since the first one in 1998. It was actually held in a vacant shop in a shopping mall. Um, but uh, yeah, we used to play um, uh, at the time. Well, we're all three games out yet. But yeah, we did. Every year for the first few years I went, we would play like a six player, play them all together you wow. know and, that's super and, cool like yeah. i i i you know i i have the second edition now of the of the you know army group center yeah. and i i'm patiently waiting for the other two to come out because i, I yeah. i'm so excited to try them well you and i don't mean to offend them? anybody with that i'm just you know yeah i'm I italian i talk with my hand so. yeah we all do that i mean i'm not but i do that anyway um camp i think we call it over here yeah. um but I didn't get them because are you going to play them all together, Nate, or are you going to play them separately? Or that's why I didn't get them because they're big blooming games again. I've got no room to put them out. I mean, my idea first is great. play them separately so I can learn them all and then combine them. Then put them on the floor and play them. Right. Correct. Exactly. You could do Vassal. I do believe there's Vassal mods. Yeah, but you that's yeah. the only thing about Vassal is you'd be moving doing all this yeah. all the time I, I, would, I would say this you know for me i'm i'm i if you want to do it what you do is you just got to organize it you just got to say okay like yeah. i've done this so i have a thing called rejuro con and i get room for about 12 people and i've done it for you know like i don't know quite a while now but and i don't know if it'll happen next year but i'm going to try um and i basically say hey and i go rent me a small conference room at a hotel and I say, okay, I got room for this many people. Here's how much it's going to cost. Do you want to come? And then I organize it, and it happens. And uh, I think that's yeah. the only way you can play these monster games. Is it? Yeah. I mean, the the one I'm going to in in May, uh, I think Dangerous Dave is is organizing the big SCS um, one. I can't remember which one. Is it the landing one? You know, the oh, day. the Norman, the uh, days of. Uh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Days. days. Yeah. yeah it yeah. might be. I might. Dave, apologies, we've got the wrong game, but it's a big. They've they've had to get like day of days. Yeah. yeah. Certain, yeah. Certain yeah. Tables yeah. 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 Play, you know. Yeah. So, um, I was going to sign up for it, but I thought oh, it's going to be a big thing. I want to play lots of games. I don't want to well, play. Well, in the states, or you know, they do get 
people come from all over the world. I'm telling you, Consum Expo. Oh yeah, I appreciate oh, the game. He's got he's got uh, everybody needed. You know, he's six players or whatever he, he's got yeah, for yeah. it. But I, 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 I mean, but it's going to be a two, out there, two day thing, and I'm thinking. I might want to play some tank jewel or something, you know. So well, yeah. I, I have a confession to make. I've never been to a convention at all yet. Oh, well, you gotta oh, go. Oh, you gotta we go. have to get rid of you then, Nate. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, you, you know I am gonna be going to the to the war room in Buckeye Game Fest in the oh. end of April. So if you are planning on going to the war room in at the end of April. I think Audi uh, goes there. Buckeye he? Game Fest. Let yeah. me know, and maybe we can hook up and play something. So uh, I was gonna. Amazing. I I actually was gonna try to go there. That's a good one. Uh, the reason I'm not, sadly, this year is because I have some CT scans coming up and different things around. The- it's a bugger, isn't it? Eight mark. It's a bugger. Yeah, but I am gonna be at Consum Expo. I was trying to say Buckeye Game Fest. Yeah, Nate, you need to go to a convention, and I'll tell you why. Number one, you get to play some stuff. Right. Number two, you're going to develop friendships that that's where you'll go to see. Eventually, it becomes like a social event. Like, yeah. oh, I only see the – I've been doing them since the late 80s as much as I can. And I just think, like, you know, people say, oh, why should I spend the money to go to a convention when I can do it at home? You know why? Because mo- a lot of this hobby for me, I, was, I always say speak for myself, but it's the social interactions sitting there sharing a drink, whatever it is, yeah. tea, alcohol, yeah. whatever, meeting people that it's just, it's just such a, and, and you get to immerse yourself yeah, and it's in just, the geekdom of it all. Yes, for, it is. It's just a room full of geeks. And uh, the, I've only been once, and I'm going again this year, and they, they put up a thing, you know, on um, uh, an Excel thing where you can book if you want to play one of the games somebody oh, okay. yeah, yeah. But a lot of the games I'm thinking no but it doesn't matter because I can just sit down at the table and say do you mind if I watch and see what you're getting on with and they go, mm-hmm. yeah come sit down yeah just watch you know and uh, yeah, that's if, great if you want to play a big game or a small game yeah. and it's a week long I'm just telling you it's like Mike mentioned I saw it and it's is honestly Consum World Expo in Tempe is it's a bucket list convention. Even if you only go once in your life, go. See, see one of my one of my things I'm like concerned about, but also it's a good concern, I guess, is that I know if I go to a convention, I'm going to walk away broke because I'm gonna buy every game that I can. <laughs> you will, yeah, especially yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, I did that, you know, buying uh, combat two and all that sort of thing, and I wasn't going to and... I mean my collection is not anywhere near any of you all. Like I, I have BGG pulled up. I have 104 games. That's all I have. That's a pretty good, <laughs> a pretty good amount. Actually. Yes. I started about six years ago playing war games. So take it some You're time. Disciplined. You're very disciplined. I, I've been playing since I was 12, but I would say this. Consum World in Tempe, I like – I don't know if I'll do. Well, who am I kidding? I will even. I like to. I'm allowed to have hope, so I'll bring an extra empty suitcase just for yeah, the fact that they have a flea market table. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Oh too, my yeah. lord! Yeah, I know. And you're getting rid of games because reasons, but you're still buying them. You donut. You know, it's yeah. We can't yeah. help it. It's, we can't look, help it's it. Part. Like I said earlier, for me, it's all part of that 12 or 10 26 games in two and a half years. That's some dedication there. And I'll just say this. Like, look, everybody, and you know, whatever. Life's too short. If you see something you want, you can afford it. Even if you just buy it, study it, look at it, and go, it's not for me, and you resell it, whatever. Just get it. Like if, and I'm not saying be, you know, whatever, you're going to make your own judgment calls, but it really is a matter of, does it bring you joy? Right. Does it make you happy? And that's honestly all that matters in this, like in our crazy world. And I know, trust me, I, you know, you got to pay the mortgage and you got to do this and plan for this. And, but you know, it's like my grandfather told me one thing you said you know it's great that you got to be prepared for tomorrow but enjoy today because even back then he was you know he didn't say tomorrow might never come that's popular now but <laughs> but he said you got to enjoy the moment hmm. 
Yeah, and well, the yeah. problem with us, good words, good words. And the yes, problem with us, Mark, is you know, war gamers or gamers in general, we have no discipline. No, <laughs> no, no, we're all living. Esther, uh, this is the time where you show that picture of what Ruff's back. Oh, no, you don't show that picture again. No. <laughs> Well, yeah. I wish we had more time. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for coming out again this week. Two hours goes by so fast. Oh, boy. It does. And, um, yeah, we, and Mark, thank you for contacting us. Thank you for your interest in the War Room. Thanks for coming on and sharing some stuff. We do appreciate it. We wish you all the best of luck. We have yeah. our email addresses. If there's any updates or information you can share with us, we will be more than happy to share it with everyone that comes out and views us every week. Okay. And I'll be sure to watch and just hey, thank you guys for having me. This was it was wonderful. It's I been really, a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. You. Very helpful. Been honestly. If you are interested in becoming a subscriber and you want to come on and do what Mark just did, contact us, ID Jester Live at gmail.com. And we will try to schedule you a time to come on the show. Again, we're only doing it once a month towards the end of the month, whenever we can get it scheduled. So we're just going to rotate in people as we can. So, you know, if you're available and you think it might be something you can do, let us know. ID Jester Live at mm. gmail.com. We'd like, to, we'd like to put a face to, to the peeps that take the mickey out of us in the chat. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to have you all on, to be honest. It'd be great. It's I need to get Nordic on because obviously he's the only one that's ever heard of a game that I know. <laughs> <laughs> we're never we're never gonna live it down. No, never, never. But that's uh, that's, that's so that's let's go it, around, Nate. let's right. say our final goodbyes. Nate, what do you got coming on your um coming up for you this week? Yeah, so I so I'm actually I've I have now recently played my fourth World War I game, and I am working on an idea for a video, actually, for my own channel. Uh, me and my... I know, great, right? Right? Ooh. Um, uh, a video yeah, for... You your channel for a second there, right? Uh, the Board Game Bunker, uh, where I want to... I want to, like... Not, not necessarily review, but kind of go over all and compare all four, because these are particularly looking at the opening months of World War One, And I'm, I was really curious how a lot of games handle that. And so I've been playing through a bunch of them. And um, I don't know when the video is going to come out, but I, well, I'm working on it. Let's you've got to play that, that new one you've got, which is the I, opening. Exactly. Oh, that's the next War, one yeah. up. Yeah. That one. Mm-hmm. Ruff, what do you got coming up this week? You're gonna, gonna well, I've got into the premieres. You can't gonna destroy it all again. No, again, no. I've got. I want to get these paintings out. I want to. I want to get um, Nemesis Lockdown painted because I want to play that at some time. Uh, but I'm determined to get um, Stalin <laughs> Escape from Stalingrad Z on the <laughs> channel so I can put it to bed. And keep You've been the, saying uh, that since Nate started. I know. Exactly. I've been saying it since Nate was in nappies, you know. But you know, it's it's going to happen, and I want to get that out of the way so I can play some other games and um, yeah, keep keep the uh, designer happy. So uh, hopefully that'll be starting next week. But I want to get these uh, paintings out of the way because this speed paint stuff is great. And slot bang, well up done. So they're all put away, and I can play the game, then get back to the gaming. But uh, as I say, I'm enjoying the painting at the moment. Hey, uh, what do you got coming up, Mark? Anything on the channel that you got scheduled or anything that we should know about? Yeah, so just, uh, well, two things. I will have shortly in the next, hopefully, couple of days, uh, Unconditional Surrender, Learn to Play. I'm going to uh, be doing Barbarossa before I jump into the full campaign. And then, oh. um, sorry to interrupt, Mark. Your Unconditional Surrender playthroughs you're doing, you're doing it as a solo playthrough, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll be and watching I explain that end, rules right. and, you yep. know, yeah. I'll be watching that. Okay. And then, um, on April, a week from, so April, whatever the next Friday is, April 5th, I, I, I'm going to be doing a Ruggiero's Corner with actually an old high school friend of mine, Scott Bell. And uh, it's, it's, you know, the format's kind of like, hey, meet your fellow gamer. But it should be a lot of fun because we have been friends since high school and we have a lot of 
a lot of stories to share and we'll, uh, we always engage our our fellow but those are probably the two outstanding anything else that shows up on my channel will be impromptu so <laughs> I'll probably, I'll probably, make I'll make sure enough. you guys go subscribe. Clark Commando 1983. You got it. You see his channel there. Make sure you go subscribe. And of course, like, subscribe, you know, and leave comments and let him know what a great job he's doing uh, on his channel. So thank you, Mark, for coming out. I, again, I'm going to announce this. I'm gonna just gonna stop before you do that, what do you got coming up on your, your yeah. channel? Well, um, Oh, I've caught him out. <laughs> oh, I have my end of the month review show coming up tomorrow because tomorrow will be the last day of March. So I'll probably be doing that tomorrow night. And I'm hoping to get some great war commander. I'm going to try and maybe do a scenario with that. So um, I'm really excited. I've been waiting for years and years for the reprint because I didn't want to spend a lot of money on it. And then I spent a lot of money at GMT buying it. So yeah, I don't know. Be interested to uh, see how you play that solo as well. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because you know I'm not a solo guy. Yeah, so it'll be interesting. Uh, and then last, of course, is the War Room at the end of April. I will be there at Bunkai Game Fest. If you are going, let me know. We can hook up. We can even play Great War Commander, or I'm I'm looking for someone that might want to play um um the World War One one um. Not Paris. No. <laughs> uh, the big strategic game. Oh, Fatal you mean... alliances. No, no. There's a I few World War One big. Paths of Glory. Paths of Glory. Yes, uh, thank you. I couldn't <laughs> think of it. A bunch. See how bad they are at names. Oh my God. Anyways. Thanks everyone for coming out and spending a couple hours with us. We do appreciate it. Make sure you go subscribe to all Ruff's channel, my channel, Mark's channel, everyone's channel. And next week, Ruff, it'll be on your channel. But I think Nate's picking the subject. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. What is the subject? I haven't decided, but I will send you. Fine. Uh, it'll be a surprise. Look on our Facebook group. We will announce what it is. We're doing it. Yeah. All right. Um, how come I don't play a lot of Knock Paris? Uh, it's too big and it's way too much work for what I'm willing to put into it. It's crunchy. I'm not a dedicated. I'm not as dedicated as Mark. Mark is. <laughs> he's got it. He's a dedicated guy. There, everyone. Thank you. Have a great week, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy your and, journey. Uh, don't forget. Enjoy. Um, we still got a report about that like button. It's broken. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting, so, I'm getting buzzing in my ear here. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll Just see everybody next week over on Ruff's channel. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah. Oh, and he's oh, gone.